In this video we have to talk about the path that sound takes once it goes from the actual outer ear towards the inner ear and to the organ of cordy and past the organ of cordy to the round window. So it would be really good if you know the anatomy and the sort of structure and function of the human ear. It will make this video much easier to understand if you have a good understanding of the different parts of the actual ear. Um, because we, what we'll do is we'll just trace the actual movement from the outer ear to the inner ear and then talk about what energy transformations occur. Because the reason why I'm saying all this is because the dot point says outline the path of sound waves through the external middle and inner ear and identify the energy transformations that occur. Right? So we need to go from the outer through the middle to the inner ear and talk about what kind of energy transformations occur at different points. So first we go and, and talk about sound, right? Because sound is obviously what our ears pick up, the outer ear picks up. So sound will come in these pockets, these compression and refraction waves, so compression and refraction. That will travel into our ear, so it will go through the pinna into the auditory canal, which is this part here, and then it will hit the tympanic membrane. So whilst it's actually going through here, it's in the form of sound, right? So it's these compression refraction. So we've got these sound waves that travel through our outer ear. So once they hit our actual tympanic membrane, that will be changed from sound energy into mechanical energy, right? So sound to mechanical happens between the auditory canal and the tympanic membrane, or, or between the pinna and the mem tym tympanic membrane, right? So the tympanic membrane is mechanical energy. Mechanical energy just means movement, right? Mechanical means you move. So now this will be moving back and forth, back and forth uh, when, when actual air hits it. So that's when mechanical energy starts. So the tympanic membrane will move. It will move onto the malus, right? The malus then moves onto the, once it's being activated, it moves onto the incus. The incus then moves on to the stapes. So here we've got movement. All of these are examples of mechanical energy. So sound to mechanical, mechanical happens there. But once it changes into mechanical, it stays as mechanical because each of these steps is still mechanical energy. We still have mechanical energy being transformed from one and the other. This would be the movement of the bones. Um, then the stapes, what the stapes does, so this would be the part of the inner ear, right? So sorry, the middle ear. This, all this is the middle ear. And then what the stapes does, the stapes pushes against the oval window. Remember, the oval window would be just the part where pressure begins, so where the actual pressure is applied by the stapes, and that will make the fluid inside the cochlea move. So pressure begins at the oval window, and the oval window would have been just this part here. So now I've got, in this case, we had movement of bones, but now we have movement of water. So the oval window will make water move, but water moving is still mechanical energy, right? So we haven't changed, we haven't transformed anything. It's just gone from movement of bone to movement of water, but it's still mechanical energy. But then that water will move for the upper canal, right? So this top canal here, water begins to move here. And again, imagine it's coming, so the, the water is actually moving into your, into your face, so outside the screen. I can't draw 3D, but just imagine this water is coming towards you, right? But whilst it's coming towards you, it's also going to push onto these membranes, which are on the side of it. So water will push, will be flowing towards you, but it'll be pushing down on the membrane. And when it pushes down on the membrane of the, the first membrane, which is called the Meissner membrane, right? So water will, so the, the, not the water moves towards you, but the actual energy is being moved towards you, but also onto the sides, so onto these Meissner membranes, which is that membrane. So energy moves from the upper canal towards the Meissner membrane, which was the middle membrane. So the, that, that connects the middle to the outer layer, right? So upper canal connected by the Meissner membrane. So water moves, or the energy moves from mechanical means from the upper canal to the Meissner membrane. And then from the Meissner membrane, it will move to the middle canal. This is by the Meissner membrane pushing onto the water, which is filling that middle canal. And the middle canal will now push onto the next layer, which is the basilla membrane. So this basilla membrane was the membrane here. So water is pushing down onto the basilla membrane, which will make it move. And this is where we've got, again, a change of energy. So it's going to be some of this mechanical energy by the water moving onto the basilla membrane. Some of the mechanical energy will be transformed into electrochemical energy. And the reason why, remember we have the basilla membrane 
is this membrane that connects to organ of Corti. So the orange thing that I'm drawing here is meant to be the basilla, basilla membrane. And when this moves, what will happen is it will also cause, so the water will cause the basilla membrane and the organ of Corti to press down, right? And that pressing down will cause the hair cells to activate because the hair cells are being being jammed or pressed down. That movement of the hair cells triggers the electrical electrochemical response that will be sent down through these auditory nerves, right? So this is where we have a transformation between the mechanical energy and electrochemical energy that happens between the middle canal and the basilla membrane. Once the middle canal, once the water in the middle canal, so the water pushes against the basilla membrane, that's when we've got the organ of Corti being activated and we have the pressure um, causing the hair cells to be activated and thereby signal to be sent. So we've got some of that mechanical energy being confirmed, changed into electrochemical energy, which is that nerve impulse. But then the water itself pushes against the membrane and that will also make the water in the lowest canal, so the water in the lowest canal move as well. So once the water in the lowest canal moves, that will eventually hit, the water in the lowest canal will eventually hit the round window. And the round window is where pressure exits. So this is the last bit. So here is basically the stop point. This is where everything ends. Once the water pressure hits the round window, it's gone and everything stops. All right, so I'll quickly go over them again. So air enters through the auditory canal, hits the sympathetic membrane. This is where sound energy is transformed into mechanical energy. Then the mechanical energy from the tympanic membrane activates the malus. Then the malus activates the incus. The incus activates the stapes. All these are part of the middle ear. And the stapes now activates the oval window because it pushes against the oval window. This is still part of the inner ear now. The oval window is part of the inner ear. The oval window starts that pressure wave that flows through the cochlea. The pressure wave starts in the upper canal but it moves through the upper canal into the pressure, moves through upper canal into the mem Meissner membrane. The Meissner membrane makes water in the middle canal move. Then the middle canal will push against the basilla membrane. The basilla membrane will then help the organ of Corti push these hair cells down. Right? And this is where we have a change from mechanical energy to electrochemical energy because these hair cells being pushed down will send a signal from the hair cells to the, the actual auditory nerve. And the auditory nerve will then meet up at the brain. That's where you have sound being interpreted. But the actual pressure then still continues. Right? So it's being the pushed down on the basilla membrane. The basilla membrane then pushes down onto water below it in the lowest canal. And the lowest canal will then stop because eventually the pressure in the lowest canal will hit the round window. And that's where that stop point is. So once it's round window, everything's gone. So for this, you should kind of know the pathway. It sounds like a lot of things to remember, but once you know the different terms, and this is pretty straightforward, you can kind of remember this quite easily once you understand the ear quite quite well. Uh, but also remember the energy transformations, sound to mechanical and mechanical to electrochemical, and where they occur as well. But I hope that was useful.